welcome to our last chapel of the semester. If you would, please stand up and worship with us. So 
Come on, let's sing of God's worthiness this morning. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring.
Father, we thank you for the power that's in your name. We thank you that nothing in this world compares to you or can stand against you, God, that you have no rivals, that you have no equal, that whatever circumstance we are standing in the middle of, you are greater. You are stronger. Death could not hold you down, and our situation will not hold you down either, Father. Father, remind us that just because there's bad things happening around us, it does not change your goodness. You are faithful to be good. You are constant to be good. And you will always be good. Thank you, Father, for who you are and what you do. Everything we see and everything we don't see, everything we understand and everything we don't understand, we thank you for all of it. We love you. We can never love you enough. We thank you. We can never thank you enough. But we will try our hardest for the rest of our days. And help us to try harder. Because not even that can we do on our own. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. morning. Am I on? Testing, testing, testing. Good morning. That's all right. My name is Trice Prince. I'm the executive assistant of the Carl Spain Center on Race Studies and Spiritual Action at ACU, and I have the pleasure and honor of introducing this morning's speaker, Dr. Jerry Taylor uh, from ACU. Dr. There we go. Dr. Jerry Taylor is the founding director of the Carl Spain Center, an associate Bible professor um, at ACU. In 1984, he received a Bachelor's of Arts in Bible from Southwestern Christian College in Terrell, Texas. In 1988, Dr. Taylor received a Master of Divinity degree from Perkins School of Theology at Southern Methodist University and went on to complete his doctorate at Perkins as well in 1995. Prior to moving to Abilene, Dr. Taylor and his family served in the Bankhead area of the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia. On top of serving as the director of the Carl Spain Center at ACU, Dr. Taylor travels extensively speaking on college campuses, conferences, and organizing retreats. He is the author of Courageous Compassion. He has began many initiatives such as the New Wineskins Retreat, the National Freedom in Christ Conference, the Young Scholars Retreat, and most recently, the Racial Unity Leadership uh, Retreat, Summits, and Prayer Retreats that we do through the Carl Spain Center at ACU. Um, he is married to Patricia Taylor, formerly of Houston, Texas, uh, and they have been married for 26 years and have two children, Alicia and Jeremiah. Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Jerry Taylor. privilege and an honor to be with you today with the awareness of the invisible divine presence of the living God who is not only in this place but who is in each person that is in this place. It is for that reason I want to talk to you about what you carry within you. The most fitting text is 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, 
beginning with verse 6 and ending with verse 14. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and your generosity and sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Attend to what you intend. Attend to what you intend. One of the hardest things to do is to give. The truth of the matter is giving is not hard, but the hard part about giving is figuring out exactly what we have to give is the hard part. Most people feel as if they have nothing to give. They don't feel as if they have anything to give because they have not taken the time to be still and to be quiet and to be silent to discover what they have inside of themselves to give. People are looking at the lack of material things in their physical environment, but they are totally unaware of the great wealth that lies within them. Someone has wisely said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. There was a South Asian farmer who ignorantly tossed aside many of the black stones he encountered and the soil on his property as he scratched out a living. After many years, he finally sold his farm in order to seek his fortune elsewhere. Little did he know that the black stones that peppered his fields and stream beds and that he had considered a nuisance were actually raw diamonds. These acres of diamonds ultimately became one of the richest mines ever discovered. Most people have only an awareness of the physical. They look only at the physical 
possessions they have. I believe that every one of us need to develop an awareness of the spiritual. We need to look at the spiritual possessions that we have within ourselves. One of the most difficult things that you will ever have to do in this life is to figure out how to transform what you are able to see in your own private understanding of the invisible qualities that you possess within yourself, that is of God's own nature, that he intends for you to transport from the inner territory of your being into the outer world where God's creation is still ongoing. God created the world and on the seventh day he rested, but the Bible does not say he quit. It is my belief that in order to be effective in co-creating with the Creator, we have to learn how to be still and to know that God is God and to really understand the purpose of recreation. Recreation is not really designed for our amusement. Amusement means to arrest your ability to think deeply on the matters of life. Many of us engage in fun activities to draw our attention away from the realities of life because we have discovered that living in this world can be very painful. And therefore we look for amusement, things that can arrest our attention and to take our minds off of a suffering and crazy and messed up world. But I want to make the case this morning that everybody needs to practice the true meaning of recreation, recreation. Take time to be still so that God can expand your awareness of his divine presence in the inner being of your own life. God lives in you through the person and the being of Jesus Christ. God lives in you through the powerful living presence of the Holy Spirit. And if you want to make a difference in the world, you have to learn how to step out of God's way and let God have his perfect expression in and through your life. Your life is only a doorway through which God enters into the world. The only reason why your body is worth anything today is because of the divine cargo that it is transporting in this world. And so I want to encourage us today to know that God wants to turn us into a two-legged book of revelation. In other words, God wants to reveal himself in and through us. Our temptation is to conceal what God wants to reveal. Whenever you allow God to reveal himself in and through you, God always finds a way to use your life to leave a footprint upon the sands of history. It is not so much what you will do, it is not so much what I will do, it is what God decides to do through us. There is a reason why you were born. You were born for God to fulfill God's own divine will and God's own purpose through your life. That is what gives us meaning. So many people have means by which to live, but they don't have a meaning for which to live. As Victor Frankl says, we have many means, but we live without meaning. So as I take my seat this morning, to make sure that I don't go over my time, I have to start concluding now. 
You are a giver because the divine creator that created you is a giver. You are being most human when you give because God created the human being to become a co-creator with him and to participate fully in this beautiful creation that God has brought about. So don't get it twisted. The stuff that you have in terms of material matter, that is not the things of which God is really concerned about. God is concerned about the spiritual assets, the spiritual qualities that exist within you, such as love, peace, compassion, forgiveness, and joy. I'm here to tell you that there is no company on Wall Street that has greater value or greater assets than the spiritual assets that God has deposited in your life. And the task that is before us is that we have to learn how to give that which is of invisible quality. We have to learn how to give that, and when we give that, Paul says, God will continue to give us more because he always put more in the store. And you are a store, a storehouse, where God stores his seeds of goodness, his seeds of grace, his seeds of joy, his seeds of compassion, you don't have to go to the store because you are the store. All you have to do is start sowing the seeds that God has already deposited in you, the seeds of righteousness. It will be the righteous acts that we do that will endure beyond the grave. People will not remember us for what we have done for ourselves, they will remember us for what we have done for others and what God has empowered us to do in the lives of other people. Yeah. And when you live like that, you don't have to live in the fear of somebody else taking what you got. Because what God gives to you, human beings cannot take it away. That's why those who are in tune and in sync with God they live in the world in a fearless fashion. They're not always looking over their shoulders, worried about who's going to take this or take that. We are givers. And this is why Jesus says it is more blessed to give than to receive. We are not takers. We are givers. And you can't give unless you have received from the divine giver who enables us to become generous. You see, he is the, the divine generator who generates generosity throughout every generation. Do you want to be a generator in your generation? Then you have to get in sync with the divine generator who generates divine energy all the time. You're not plugged into the outlets in the inlets of this world. You are plugged into a divine power source that is so deep that the bottom never reaches the bottom. The more you reach into him, the deeper he gets. You carry something in you that the world needs and is crying for and is craving for. I see my lights dimming on me, so I better step on down. Don't forget. Don't forget what you have in you. And don't allow anybody to judge you based on the material things that you have or you don't have. Your worth does not depend upon the material possessions that you have. I rented a brand new Cadillac just the other day. Drove up to some friends and they said, man, is that you? I said, no, that's a car. I'm me. 
I don't define myself by what I have on the outside or what I don't have on the outside. I define who I am by the one who told Moses, I am that I am. Stay in touch with him. Stay connected to him. I'm running over a little bit here, just a little bit over the runway, but you stay connected to him. Remain rooted in him. Don't get attached to how you look on the outside because every time you look in the mirror, those physiological changes are taking place in everybody. Young folk, don't get fixated on how you look now because you're looking at your future right now. Can I get an amen? amen? The hair is gonna turn white and it's gonna turn loose. And that shape that used to look like a Coca-Cola bottle will be transformed into a Dunkin' Donut. Help me somebody. But thank God. Thank God that is not who you are. You are more than what meets the eye. Keep your eyes fixed on the one to who you are one with and attend to what you intend. Figure out what it is that God has given to you to give to the world and pay attention to that. Keep your focus on that. Don't get distracted by other people. You attend to what God has intended for you to intend and to give to the world. And you will be so blessed and so full of joy because you're allowing God to be God's self in and through your physical body. And when people give you praise and thanks for what you have done, you will always be able to point back to the OG to the original giver, and to know that God is the one who is giving. Praise God. We have never had a standing ovation, Dr. Taylor, so I just want you to know I have long admired your work. I have long admired the way that scripture comes alive through you. And so I am, I am personally blessed by you, personally blessed by what you're about, and personally blessed to know that God works in us and through us in various ways. So know that you've influenced a young East Texan long before you even met him. So I'm grateful for you. And I know we are grateful for him, right? Amen. <laughs> hey, when someone is speaking and they get in the zone, you just get out of the way. You are in the zone and we are so blessed by you. Let me pray and you guys are dismissed. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we're grateful. God, you truly spoke to us this morning. I'm so grateful Dr. Taylor allowed himself to move out of the way and to allow your spirit to speak through him. God, we're honored. God, we're blessed to be able to be a gift to others. Allow the words that were spoken this morning to not just be mere words that fall on deaf ears, but to truly be transformative in us and through us so that we can in turn treat each other like children of God. It's in your most holy and precious name. Allow the rest of our semester to truly be a time where we press in and love and give every day. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>